Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Alexander Gutkowski, and I am an assistant lecturer at Soka University, Japan. Today, I would like to talk about my research project, Poetry-Based Instruction, Teachers and Students' Perceptions. In this research, I surveyed and interviewed teachers and students to find out what are their attitudes to using poetry in the language classroom. And by using poetry, I mean not only reading it, but also writing it. So, first I would like to start with the background and some literature on the subject. Then I would like to move to the methodology, talk about results and discussion, and finally mention some practical points, practical takeaways uh, that you can use if you plan to implement poetry in your language classroom. So, let's begin. And I think first thing that we need to do is ask ourselves a question. Why poetry? Why should we even consider using poetry for teaching English? There are so many other options, right? YouTube videos, movies, other types of literature. Why poetry? Well, I think with curriculums that are that tend to be dominated by academic tasks and function-based texts. Poetry can give a breath of fresh air to our students. You know, reading menus and recipes is great. Writing academic essays is important. But I think that we should also give our students a chance to connect with texts on a deeper emotional level. And poetry can do just that with its imagery, expression, and emotion. And I think that's why Plutarch said poetry is painting that speaks. All right, let me start from the literature review and I will briefly talk about two main points, uh, benefits of reading and writing poetry as well as possible drawbacks. And it's important to mention that those points mostly per pertain to the university students because that was the target demographic for my research. So let's start with the benefits. Several studies note that openness to interpretation that is present in a poetry can stimulate the meaning creation process, which in turn is linked to motivation and heightened interest among students. For instance, Khatib demonstrated uh, that students who are allowed to analyze and interpret poetry in their own way have higher levels of interest or has have higher levels of interest and motivation as compared to the students who were subjected to more traditional approach. Next is reading poetry and writing poetry is connected to emotional engagement and self-expression. Emotional engagement supports reading motivation, right? We're inter if we emotionally involved in something, if we emotionally invested in a story, we want to keep on reading. That's the same with the poetry and self-expression that is more relevant to poetry writing has an opportunity of empowering students to openly talk about their emotions. The next possible benefit is fostering expressive language and several studies demonstrated that poetry allows students to focus on form and deliberate word choice which might be an important tool for intensive reading. And both reading and writing poetry have high potential for fostering the usage of expressive language and stylistic devices. And expressive language is not something that is unique to poetry. 
we can often find it in speeches, in presentations. So there is a chance of connecting poetry to something else, to speeches, presentations, something you might see on TV like commercials. The next benefit is language experimentation. Uh, several studies suggest that poetry is a great outlet to let students experiment with language and subvert it in creative ways. Uh, specifically, Smith mentions that by writing poetry, lang uh, language learners can engage in language play that is often used in an everyday speaking situations to build trust and intimacy between interlocutors. So learning how to do it might be an extremely important skill. And finally, poetry, poetry reading enables understanding of prosody and intonation. Um, Khatib demonstrated that learners who read poetry tend to adapt prosodic and intonational features of the target language. But an important point that uh, students should read poetry aloud or sh they should be aware, they should be directed towards uh, paying attention to prosody and intonation. All right, and now we will talk about some perceived drawbacks or limitations of poetry. First of all, there is this factor of perceived complexity. In his study, uh, Gazali and other researchers, they pointed out that students tend to have negative ideas about poetry because they perceive poetry as something complex or archaic or canonic or too long or requiring too much cultural knowledge. So mostly those ideas stem from having a negative previous experience with poetry. And the point about previous experience, I think, is well articulated in the study performed by Liao and Roy among Bangladesh students. They found out that surprisingly, students who measured in English literature were less confident to write poetry in English compared to students who measured in engineering. And the researchers concluded that the research, uh, the study background, right, the academic background of the participants had an influence on their confidence in writing because students who measured in English, they had the idea of poetry as being something classical, archaic, cryptic, hard to understand. Uh, so yeah, quite, quite a surprising result. And the final drawback is related to assessment difficulties because poetry is often perceived by teachers as something that is being hard to assess. And as a result, a lot of educators opt in for anything goes approach when they would just assess the fact of submission, but would not assess the quality of students work. All right. So these are the benefits and drawbacks. You can see the quick summary right now on the screen. If you need more time to read it, please pause because we need to move on to the methodology of this study. Okay, moving on to the methodology of this study, allow me to talk about research questions. The first question was, how familiar are Japanese university students and English teachers with poetry, reading and writing? Second and third questions are extremely similar and they're both measured attitudes towards reading and writing poetry among students in the second question and among English teachers in the third question. And finally, fourth question was about the perceived benefits and limitations of poetry as a language learning tool. And this question was mainly asked to English teachers. Let's Next, let's take a look at participants. There were two main groups uh, that participated in this study. 
Uh, the first one was university level English educators and the second one was university students. You can also note that English educators group is further divided into two smaller subgroups. The first small group is English teachers who do not use poetry in their classes. And the second subgroup is English teachers who extensively use poetry in their classes or who have conducted research on poetry in the second language education setting. For the sake of clarity, I will call the first group teachers and the second group experts. Moving on to the university students, this group was mainly comprised of students that belonged to the faculty of letters and the students levels ranged from intermediate and upper intermediate in terms of language proficiency. Now, moving on to the instrument, we had semi-structured interviews for both teachers and experts, and those interviews measured familiarity and attitude towards reading and writing poetry, as well as possible benefits and limitations of poetry usage in the second language setting. Uh, for the university students, we had questionnaire and follow-up interviews. Questionnaire and follow-up interviews measured familiarity and attitudes towards poetry, reading, and writing. Now let us move on to the next point, results and the discussion of possible implications of this study. And we will start from the student's questionnaire and interviews. Student questionnaire collected 70 responses from the students, and most of the questions were based on the Likert scale from 1 to 5. The first section was about familiarity with poetry, and as you can see, familiarity of, poet, uh, of students with the poetry is quite low. As for the frequency of poetry, reading, and writing, it is also low, especially the frequency of poetry writing, and especially of poetry writing in English. The next section was about attitudes towards poetry, both reading and writing. Generally, interest levels towards both poetry reading and writing were slightly above neutral, so generally favorable, around 3.5, 3.8. Nothing, nothing crazy, but mildly favorable. Some positive attitudes cited by students were reading poetry might be useful for learning English. Poetry is important for expressing feelings, emotions, and experiences. Reading poems fosters expressive language, and poetry writing provides opportunities to experiment with language. Those were some positive points and positive attitudes. As for the negative attitudes, drawbacks of poetry were mostly associated not with irrelevance and not with the law of interest, but mostly with the complexity of poems. Difficult vocabulary, unfrequent words, uh, long poems that are hard to understand, aspects like that. And Finally, student questionnaire had a set of open-ended questions at the end about willingness to write poetry, and many students linked writing poetry and self-expression. So a lot of students who were willing to write poetry mentioned that poetry is great for expressing themselves. As for the students who were unwilling to write the poetry, they mostly related it to the perceived linguistic complexity of the poems. Again, we can see the linguistic complexity, hard vocabulary, some unknown words, length of poems, etc. Now, moving on to student interviews, it is important to note that we only had four interviews. It might not be enough to generalize the information, but I think the interviews they still provide an invaluable insight 
into why students are willing or not willing to engage with poetry in a lingu in, a, in an English classroom. So, uh, in terms of attitudes towards poetry, all four students were not familiar with writing poetry, but stated that they would be willing to try it. Self-expression was cited as an important aspect of language learning that can be achieved through poetry. Uh, and all students mentioned self-expression in the relation to poetry and motivation. Uh, the third point was, quite interestingly, three students mentioned that their English classes at school lacked a self-expression component. So, including poetry in a language learning curriculum might be the, the boost uh, in terms of interest and motivation. Uh, to connect poetry to self-expression. Another point was that complex vocabulary was perceived as a possible drawback by four students, but none of them mentioned irrelevance or lack of interest as a possible drawback. And finally, I asked students to give their ideas about some possible activities or practical considerations, and they're mentioned all of them mentioned that songs are easier and they would suggest starting with the songs lyrics and then moving on to simple poems. But it is worth mentioning that one student noted that some songs have slang, which is hard to understand. So be careful with the slang in songs if you choose to proceed with songs. And Three students mentioned that haiku poem, that haiku poetry might be a good fit for engaging Japanese students because most of the Japanese students are familiar with haiku and tanka poetry. Now we will move on to the interviews with teachers and experts. A total number of four teachers agreed to take part in the interviews and here are some perceived benefits. Three out of four teachers cited openness to interpretation in poetry reading and self-expression in poetry writing as motivating factors to students. Two out of four teachers also suggested that writing poetry might be a powerful tool for emotional exploration that students can employ to talk about their feelings without the aspect of being judged. As for the perceived drawbacks, Lexical complexity was mentioned by all interviewees, with one interviewee mentioning irrelevance of poems as a possible demotivating factor. Some other issues highlighted by the teachers were length of poems and possibly abstract nature of some poems that might be frustrating for students. Next, moving on to the attitudes towards assessment, only one teacher was in favor of assessing students' poems, with two teachers who would not assess poems at all. They would just assess the fact of the submission, but not the quality of the work. And one teacher noted that assessing poetry would only be appropriate in a content-based or EMI course, but not in a language learning class. I think these results correlate fit nicely with what we have seen in the literature review. Uh, in the literature review, I remind you, some studies mentioned that teachers often shun assessing poetry or take this anything goes stance in which they would assess only submission, but not the actual quality of students' work. So I think the results of those studies are reflected here as well. Uh, and moving on to the practical considerations, just as students did, teachers suggested using song lyrics and haiku to introduce students to poetry. Now we move on to our final group of participants, which is experts. Possible benefits highlighted by three interviewed experts were expressive language, emotional component, and prosody. As you can see, emotional component aspect is quite similar to what teachers have highlighted, but 
expressive language and prosody do not really appear in teacher's interviews. As for possible limitations, all the experts cite linguistic complexity and irrelevance of old poems to students. Two out of three experts uh, agreed that students' poems should be assessed and a set of clear criteria should be established. They also mentioned that this set of criteria should be well communicated to students so they know exactly what they're being graded upon. Uh, one expert, on the other hand, would not assess student works and would only, would only assess the submission fact due to the subjective nature of, of poetry. This participant noted that he doesn't want to assess student work because it would feel like an intrusion into the student's creative process. As for the practical considerations, all three experts suggested using song lyrics and haiku poetry. Mm -hmm. Also, they noted that teachers should, should have a set of well-communicated criteria for assessment, and teachers should not impose a singular interpretation of poetry, singular reading of poems being used in the course. Now we're moving on to our final part, takeaways and some practical recommendations. If you are considering uh, including a reading, poetry reading component into your course, please consider the following things. Try to select level appropriate texts and if possible, include students in a decision-making process. It would be also a good idea to start with the song lyrics and then move to the simple poems. You can also include rhyming activities to heighten the prosodic awareness and allow students to interpret poems without imposing a single reading. Finally, it would be a good, a good decision to direct students' attention to expressive language and stylistic devices because those two things are not only used in poetry but can be quite effective for presentations and public speeches. Now, moving on to the recommendations for writing poems is, first, consider starting with simple poems, such as pattern poems. I will mention them in a minute. Second, try establishing restrictions on form to create a framework. Uh, experts noted that sometimes just asking students to write poetry without any framework can be overwhelming. So restrictions on form can serve as a framework. So students have something to anchor themselves to. Next, consider avoiding narrow thematic restrictions because those can hinder the self-expression component, which was one of the most salient components related to the motivation according to the student questionnaires and interviews. And finally, if you do great poems, introduce clear criteria and communicate this criteria well to your students. Now, I mentioned some pattern poems, and here you can see that pattern poems are extremely easy, extremely simple to write, but they also give this space of imagination, some creativity latitude to students, so students can feel safe using the pattern framework and also can express themselves with the choice of words. Okay, and this, that's it for my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Here's my contact information and the referenced works. Thank you.